Hey gamers, it's me David Peacock and this week we're going to be talking about the newest hottest video game system. No one's been able to get this thing. No, not the PlayStation 5. No, not the Xbox Series X. That's right, we're going to talk about the Game & Watch that plays Super Mario Brothers. That's right, you might go, why would this be the biggest one? But think about it. The Xbox Series X, it can play all the old Xbox games, all the old Xbox 360, all the P the Xbox One. The PS5, it can play PS4 games and is backwards compatible and all that. But this system, it plays Mario Brothers. But not just Mario Brothers, also Mario Brothers 2. And more importantly, Ball. That's right. Now let's see what the system looks like. The other systems, they're huge. People are talking about the Xbox Series X like it's a fridge. But this system, this big. That's right. It's tiny, smaller than your hand. Smaller than the phone I'm recording this on. Let's see how it plays. And, wait, what? Oh, this is the wrong channel? Oh, it's my math channel. Oh, sorry everybody. Welcome to Geometry. So today we're going over perpendicular and angle bisectors. And let's start by talking about the perpendicular bisector theorem. But to actually talk about that, we first need to remind ourselves what a perpendicular bisector is. So first we have a line segment, AB. And a perpendicular bisector is a line or line segment that goes through the midpoint at a 90 degree angle, which means the distance from A to this line or B to this line is equal. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end points of the segment. So that was the perpendicular bisector theorem. Now let's talk about perpendicular bisectors and triangles. In a triangle, the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle meet at a point that we call the circumcenter. That is where these three lines are meeting. The circumcenter is equidistant to the three vertices. Now you might be noticing the word circumcenter and thinking of things like circumference. That's because, well, it is. So, if you look at each of these lines, consider that a radius. To this circumscribed circle. The circumcenter is the center of the triangle's circumscribed circle right there. A circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is circumscribed about the polygon. Alright, so now let's talk about how circumcenters work. So if we are in an acute triangle like this one, the circumcenter will be in the center of the triangle. But now let's talk about what happens if we have a circumcenter elsewhere. For instance, on a right triangle. With a right triangle, the circumcenter will end up being at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. If we have an obtuse triangle, the circumcenter will be outside of the figure, like this right here. Now let's talk about angle bisectors. An angle bisector, to remind you, is a ray that bisects or cuts in two an angle into two equal angles. So these two new angles are going to be congruent. Here is a secret, or here is the, theor the theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angles. So these two red lines would be equidistant from the angle. Well, possibly. The line from the angle bisector to the sides must be perpendicular for this to be true. In this case, it is perpendicular, which makes it true. All right, so now let's talk about angle bisectors and triangles. In a triangle, the angle bisectors end up meeting at a point that we call 
the in center. And yes, they do all meet. You can try this yourself as well. The in center is equidistant to all three sides of the triangle. Because you might remember for each angle, so for instance, for this angle right here, this line should be equidistant to both of these. For this angle right here, this line should be equidistant to these two lines. And for this one, this line right here should be equidistant to both sides like that. So that creates the end center. The end center is the center of the triangle's inscribed circle. So circumscribed was outside of the circle. Inscribed is inside of the circle. A circle inscribed in a polygon intersects each line that contains the side of a polygon at exactly one point, meaning it touches it just barely and moves on. Each side it only touches once. It's also kind of a peace sign. All right, so we're going to talk about how to write an equation in point slope form with the perpendicular bisector of a segment with these given endpoints. Now before you ask, yes, we've done this before. This was back when we were talking about perpendicular bisectors. But here's the difference. We're going to use these to find the equation of, well, to find the point of the circumcenter by doing it twice. So the first thing we have to do with any two points is we find the midpoint. So 4 minus 2 over 2, 0 plus 6 over 2, because remember we're adding our x's, adding our y's, and one of our x's was negative, which is why it looked like a minus. So then 4 minus 2 is 2, 0 plus 6 is 6, so 2 over 2 is 6 over 2, a comma 6 over 2, so that becomes 1, 3. All right, now let's find the perpendicular slope. That's uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so 6 minus 0 over negative 2 minus 4. That becomes 6 over negative 6 which is a slope of negative 1, which turns into positive 1 when we make it perpendicular. And our final step is, of course, to plug it in, plug it in. That's right, and so we just go y minus the y value in our midpoint, or y minus 3 is equal to 1 times x minus 1, or y minus 3 equals x minus 1. So now that we have that slope, we have to find the circumcenter for a triangle with these points. Our first step is to find the equation of the two perpendicular bisectors. We already have one of them, but we need a second. So we go in. MN is what we're going to do. We could have also chosen to do LN, but I chose MN. So with MN, what we end up doing is first we find our midpoint. And negative 2 plus 6, 6 plus 2, so that becomes 4 and 8, or 2, 4. Then we find our slope. Our slope ends up being negative 1 half, which becomes a positive 2, meaning our final equation is y minus 4 is equal to 2 times x minus 2. Now we need to put them both in y equals format. So on our first one, we just add 3 to both sides, which ends up becoming y equals x plus 2. And on our second one, we have to first multiply it out. So y minus 4 is equal to 2x minus 4, but then I have to, well, change it up a bit. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That ends up becoming y equals 2x. Then I find out where they intersect. I could graph them both, but since I don't want to draw a graph on here, I'm going to just set them as equal to each other. 2x is equal to x plus 2. We subtract x from both sides. x equals 2. So now that I know the value of x, I want to plug it back in. I could do it to either one. I'm going to choose x plus 2. So y is equal to 2 plus 2, which means y equals 4, meaning our circumcenter is 2, 4. And there we go. If you wouldn't mind, please, liking and subscribing. Uh, we have one more video like this this week before ooh, a break. So yeah. Please like and subscribe uh, for more uh, amazing content. Also, hit the bell for notifications.